I, I know time is short, but the, uh, and I don't know if the committee's familiar with this, and I'm going to share this with you. Um, Lori um, Garver gave a speech on March 10th to the American Astronom Astronautical Society, and um, I, this was dumbfounding to me. The, the NASA, the statute creating NASA, Congress's direction to NASA, and the nation's direction is that NASA's job is, quote, to pioneer the future in space exploration, scientific discovery, and aeronautics research, period. Lori Garver told the American Astronomical Society that NASA's priority are to fight poverty, promote world peace, and uh, societal advancement, and protect the environment. I, this, as this, I think, she says, and I'll quote it directly, she says, the president's budget will enable NASA to align with the priorities of the nation. And these key national priorities that I'm referring to are economic development, poverty, hunger, and jobs, international leadership and geopolitics, world peace, education, societal advancement, environment, future of the planet, and of humanity. Uh, and I'd suggest to you that uh, Ms. Garver has com uh, completely lost sight of the core mission of NASA, which is to preserve and protect America's leadership in manned space, manned and robotic space exploration, uh, to pioneer the future in space exploration, scientific discovery, and aeronautics research, to go where no one has gone before and explore new worlds. And that is NASA's mission. It is, NASA's mission is not fighting poverty, world peace, uh, and, and, and protecting the environment. I mean, uh, those may be subsets or spinoffs, but, um, I, you know, Ms. Garvers, I, I, I'll make sure my colleagues see this. This, this is very disturbing. Did, were you aware of this? And is this I, I, is your is your vision of NASA that NASA's number one job is to fight poverty or world peace? Surely not. And I, you know, I I know Lori incredibly well, and I know that Lori knows what the mission of NASA is. Well, I, this is I what she told uh, the astronomers. I don't think she questions whatsoever what our what our charge is and what our mission is uh, under the National Space Act and the subsequent. Uh, appropriations act. Would, would you please talk to her and get? I mean, this this I, I will, needs to be retracted. This is not acceptable. Yes, you don't agree with this, do you? Uh, I, I, NASA's mission, as established by the National Space Act, has not changed. NASA's mission, uh, you know, is still what what it is. And so you disagree with Ms. Garvin? You disagree with this speech, Congressman? I. That's the first I've seen that, and I do. You know, I just don't want to uh, to get in. I'll, I'll share it with you. Make sure you see it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Though, I mean, if if we decide that you know Ares Five is the design we want to use, and we just start the Boy, development of Ares Five, how could that possibly take longer than doing R and D on other potential lift uh, technologies? Settling on a new technology, developing that new technology, how could how could that possibly be quicker than developing uh, Ares Five? Congressman, I, you know, I think the biggest thing would would just be the fact that um, uh, we would not be able to to. Oh, let me ask a question here because I want to make sure I understand your question. You're saying if we decided. That we were going to put the money into uh, into Constellation to develop Ares Five, um, and not add any, just take take money the way we could find it. Uh, if that's the question you asked, um, without putting an additional 5.9 billion dollars on top of the program, what we would find would be that we would have a heavy lift launch vehicle uh, with with no capability of putting people on the surface of the moon or on Mars or anywhere else because we would have we would have expended all the money on the vehicle itself. Um, we would find that, uh, you know, we were, we, we're back in this conundrum uh, that the Augustine Committee found us where money was really not the only problem. It was a significant problem, but it was, it was not the only problem because we had allowed the program to deteriorate to the point that, that if you threw all this money down here, it wasn't that we had things waiting to be, you know, to be built. Uh, for example, one of the procurements that I stopped was uh, was a study for an for the Altier, the the lander. Uh, the Constellation program had not been allowed to go that far because of the shortage of funds. So, uh, you know, we would have found ourselves having to go from scratch to to um, do the studies on development and and, and design and development of a, of a lander for the moon. 
Let me ask you about one. There is a strong reason to question the dollar figures that are produced, that was produced by the uh, Augustine Commission. Um, uh, can you provide the committee the Aries 1 and the Aries 5 cost estimate NASA had last spring um, and also they had estimated last spring and also provide the committee with a written detailed explanation from NASA as to how operating Aries 1 would cost $4 billion a year. So I can provide that for the record. I, I, I'll be glad to do that. And, and the reason I, I mentioned that is was because the, uh, you know, my staff uh, was given the numbers of Aries 1, the operation cost at $1.3 billion. That's per flight. Okay. So you're saying I do know that I do know that the 1.3, 1.6 billion, and when I talk about things that shocked me, uh, because you know I wanted to use an Aries type vehicle as a as a test vehicle, and and when I asked the question, how much would it cost me to to fly, you know, not not an Aries one, but but that kind of vehicle, then the number given me at the time was 1.6 billion dollars per flight, and. I mean, it's, it seems like an extreme number to me, and I'm still looking. So I, I will be glad to provide you with the information that, you know, the basis for that number. Well, the reason I say that is because this is the uh, response from NASA, and it says total cost for three flights in a year is, is $1.1 billion. I, so, I will, I'll go back and double-check my numbers and then get back to you for the records. If you could yeah, I'll, I'll give us some explanation on that. Uh, you've uh, heard a lot about uh, inflated numbers about how much it will cost to uh, complete uh, the Constellation program, including the, uh, the, he the heavy lift of uh, Ares 5, which I men mentioned. Uh, my understanding is that NASA's estimate in the spring of last year for developing Ares 5 was, about, was that by, tw by 2020, uh, through the first flight of Ares 5, the cost of development plus production costs would be $16.5 billion. If Ares 1 is not completed, which means we could not benefit from the way the two programs were designed to use some of the same technology, then the fact would result in a cost of Ares 5 of about $27 billion. Uh, our staff were told last Friday by the CFO that the, that the cost of developing a heavy lift rocket would be 30 to $50 billion. What engineering data would you have you obtained since the spring of 2009, which leads to the incredibly inflated figure of $50 billion? Congressman, I, uh, I'll have to get that to, the, to you uh, for entry into the record. I, I, I was not aware of that figure. Okay. Uh, 